Hi, and welcome to today's video. I'll be going through the Subrack identity setup for Privilege Cloud Shared Services. My name is Brad McDowell, and I'm a senior Privilege Cloud consultant here in Australia. Today's objectives are to log into Privilege Cloud for the first time. Then we'll configure an authentication profile and secured zone, which will apply into a Cyberarch identity policy. We'll then go and install the Cyberarch identity connector software on the two connector servers in this lab. So the Active Directory users can log into Privilege Cloud. Then we'll set up alternative MFA options such as one-time password and FIDO2 security keys. And then we'll remove the email and SMS MFA options. So this is the lab environment where we plan on having two Windows connector servers and two Linux connector servers. Uh, we have an Active Directory domain controller and two targets, one Windows, one Linux. So very simple. So I'll be logged into the workstation one in this demo. And our goal is to install the identity connector on connector server one and connector server two right here. This will allow Active Directory users to log into Privilege Cloud. So over on the workstation, we'll head over to the Privilege Cloud portal. Uh, this is what the URL will look like. You'll replace your subdomain here. In my case, this is the lab we're using. We'll stick in the initial username. Uh, this is what it will look like. It'll be first name underscore last name at cyberact.cloud and then the, the numbers at the end you're given. I don't know my password at the moment, and, and that's most likely you won't either. Uh, so we'll go, forgot your password. And I'm going to use text message as the challenge method. I can now set the password. So I'll stick in a password I want. And now I can log in for the first time. Now that we're logged in, we'll click on the go to identity administration here, and we'll go to the bottom and we'll go to authentication here. And we'll add an authentication profile here. Uh, give it a name. In my case, I want to select password, mobile authenticator, one-time password client, SMS, email, and FIDO2 authenticators. Later on in the video, we'll disable SMS and email to secure the environment further. I'll also head over to network and then secured zones. And this is optional. Because this is a lab, I want to lock this down based on source IP as well. And it will give you your current IP here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it. And now we'll head back up to policies here. And we'll add a new policy set, give this a name. I'm going to set this policy to use specified roles. This will be the system administrator role, and we'll add that. And then we'll also add any role that starts with the word privilege. And we'll save that. We'll go back into the privilege collide policy. And I'll go through some of the settings I like to set. This will be different for your environment, depending on your requirements. But we'll start off with the application policies, then user settings. I'm going to enable the workforce password management features. We'll save that. We'll go to endpoint policies, then common settings, mobile settings, and then security settings. And this is where you can enable require number matching for mobile authenticator to prevent the accidental approvals. So we'll turn that on. Now we'll head over to the authentication profile and we'll go to CyberArk Identity. And I'm going to add, well, before we do that, I'll set the default just in case uh, you're not wanting to do the based on the secured zones. But I'll set the default to Privilege Cloud Auth Profile here. But I'm also going to further secure it by setting a policy to say if the source IP address is inside the secured zones, 
we will still uh, we'll still do the uh, privileged cloud auth profile. But more importantly, if you're outside the secured zones, we'll we will not be allowed to log in to this environment. We'll repeat what we just did. Uh, this is for the users logging into the system, but I'm also going to apply the same security measures to the administrators logging in. So I'll add a new rule to say, if we're inside the secured zones, and then we'll go privilege cloud auth profile. And then if we're outside the secured zones, will not be allowed. I also set up the default or profile to be this. Um, it isn't necessary when I've got these rules, but I'll do that in this case. All right, uh, now we'll go to the user security policies and we'll go to OAuth one time password. And we'll select yes on that to allow users to set up one time password clients like Google Authenticator, Microsoft Authenticator, etc. We'll also go to the user account settings and we'll make a few changes here. Enable FIDO to authenticators. We'll also set up, uh, set this to no. Uh, we don't want users to set up security questions uh, and we haven't allowed them to do security questions in their um, authentication profile anyway. There are many other settings you can do, but these are the main ones I like to turn on, but we'll leave this for now. Just a few notes on the default configuration. The initial administrator, if we go to roles, isn't a member of the privileged cloud administrator's role. I don't want to add this user to this role yet. I want to add a domain user to that later. But furthermore, the system administrator role will have the first name underscore last name account. So this is our cloud account uh, that we that we need. Now, my goal is to turn off SMS and email authentication options. So if I go over to the user portal and offline, I've set up the one-time password client and uh, a YubiKey in my case uh, to allow authentication. Uh, these wouldn't have a green ticked by default, but you can show your QR code and go through the process there. You can also use an app called CyberArk Identity and allow push notifications for that user. In a real world example, you wouldn't use the first name underscore last name account for that because typically you'd use your domain account using that application. Now that we've got multiple uh, MFA methods other than SMS or email, I'll now log off as this user and we'll log on again as that user to test uh, MFA methods. So as, as you can see here, we've got multiple methods we can select. Um, if I was to turn off SMS and email and I didn't have any other methods, I wouldn't be able to log on. Just to, to speed up this process, I'm going to use the YubiKey in this case. And we are now logged into the system. Our next goal is to get Active Directory accounts logged into this environment. So we'll go to the identity administration here. And we'll come down to network. So under network, we'll typically see our identity connectors here that are established. We don't, uh, we obviously don't have any at the moment. So our goal is to download the software and you can download that here under connectors and we have the CyberArk identity connector. You need to download that and place that on your connector servers. We also need to reset the password for the installer user that is found under users, then all service users, and then installer user. So we'll document this username. So we need that during the installation. And we also need to set a password. When we set a password, uh, it's important to not use special characters. So if you use this generator feature, that will generate some special characters, which in some parts of the privileged cloud installation does break for certain characters. So best practice is to use a password with no special characters, uppercase and lowercase and some numbers and 
uh, you can see I'm using a password of this length. This password gets reset every 24 hours, so there's no need to document the password as it's reset every 24 hours. So now we've got the password and we've downloaded our software. I've done that offline, so I'll head over to Connect to Server 1 and we'll do the installation there. So we'll extract the CyberArk Identity Management Suite. In my case, I'll select the defaults. Once the application is installed, it will launch the connector configuration wizard. And this is where we need to enter in our installer username and the password. So we'll tick this to allow the CyberArk identity to access the deleted objects container in Active Directory. Next, a network test will be done to ensure the appropriate connectivity to the internet is allowed. That's finished and we can see that uh, the connection is successful. So this is registered. If we head back over to the settings and network page, and we can see Connector Server 1 is established here. So I'll head over to Connector Server 2 and repeat the same steps there. So we've got redundancy for the identity connector. Cool, so we can see the second connector server is now registered. We head back over to the identity portal and we refresh the network page. We can see both connector servers are here. Uh, so this gives us redundancy in terms of um, lookups to Active Directory and authentication uh, when we use identity. So now we'll head back up to roles and we'll go to the Privileged Cloud Administrator role, and I will all add in an Active Directory user called Brad. So we know this is an Active Directory user uh, for the ones that have a yellow uh, orange triangle here, and this is my non-privileged account, and this is my privileged account. So I'll select my non-privileged one here, and I'll also do the same under the system administrator role so that my Active Directory user has access. So now that I've done that, I'll open a new incognito window and we'll head over to Privileged Cloud and log in as that user to test that we can authenticate. So we'll stick in the Active Directory username and the password. And notice that we don't have any other MFA methods at the moment. So I'm going to use SMS again. And we're logged in to Privilege Cloud. I'll head over to the identity user portal and set up additional MFA methods so I can turn off SMS and email. So I'll go to account. I'll stop the recording and I'll come back once I'm done. So I've set up the one-time password client offline. I'll now set up the UV key. And now that we've got multiple MFA methods set up, I can now head up back over to the ad admin portal. Go to settings, then authentication, and privilege cloud auth profile, and we can remove SMS and email. I'll now close this browser and open a new incognito again and test that the MFA is working. So we try and log in as that user again. You'll notice that we don't have the option to use SMS or email. So we'll stick in our password. I'll use the YubiKey again. Great, so we're logged in with an Active Directory user uh, using the Identity Connector, and we've also set up authentication profile and policy to lock down our privileged cloud users and system administrators. 
Uh, and we also, in this case, locked it down to a secured zone. And finally, thank you for watching.